Welcome to Yumi Radio. This is the Yumi Radio Morning Show with DJ Kelly. And um, every morning we go through what is happening in the news. And our reference point is the New York Times front page. So we go through the New York Times front page every morning. And this morning is no different. So for the next couple of minutes, that's what we are going to be doing. Following the news, we will look at uh, what is happening in migration. And I always say, if you travel, if you plan to travel, if you have family members who travel, then the new the migration trends should matter to you. It is important. It should be in- important to you because not all migrants did so of their own free will. And sometimes people, um, the result of a travel, of a trip, of a vacation trip, of sometimes a temporary travel trip, sometimes result in, um, the result of that is um, persons being trapped or end, end up having to stay where they are for varying reasons, sometimes not um, based on choice or personal choice or decision or desire sometimes. Um, but sometimes that's what happens. And even for those persons who intentionally um, migrate for whatever reason, that also matters because I cannot see anyone being happy and flourishing anywhere but, but decides to risk their life to go somewhere else. I, I can't see that. So people do this because they're seeking better. You know, because they're seeking to... They're seeking happiness. They're in pursuit of happiness. They're in pursuit of survival sometimes. And so it's important for us to to understand that data before we have the conversations. You know what I mean? And finally, we talk about um, consumer trends, um, what is happening, especially digitally, digitally, because that's where we're heading now. That's where the world is heading. That's where business is being positioned right now. So it's important to have the information so you know how to position, position your own brand because you're a brand by, by default. You, you're an entrepreneur by default. It doesn't matter if you have a contract with a, a company long term or short term. You are an entrepreneur because you have services that you offer. You have, you have benefits that you offer someone else. You serve, you know, and then you are rewarded for your services. So you are a business. You're a brand. Whether or not you want to own that, whether or not you claim it, you are. There's some of us who go out there and say, oh, no, I'm an employee. I work for someone. No, you have a contract with a company. They call you an employee, but in effect, you're an entrepreneur. And when you see it that way, you're able to leverage and maximize on the, the um, benefits of that. If you don't recognize it, then you just remain someone who serves somebody else who pays you and you never get to really leverage that opportunity in your own favor. So it's important to know those things. But now we're going to go to the New York Times and we start with the weather. Um, it's February 11, 2020. You're listening to You Me Radio. This is the You Me Radio Morning Show. I'm DJ Kelly. And today will be cloudy, showers, fog in the morning, high 49. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 37. And tomorrow, partly sunny with a high uh, 46. Winds to the west. The weather map appears on page A24, so you can view it there. I always first go to the photo that's on the front page, and we have four photos. They say an image is a photo is worth a thousand words we have four thousand here um so okay so we have the first image is a group of persons hands up and i'm seeing them with poster with the banners that says bernie and then on the to the right of that photo is iaff firefighters for biden and then we have another picture here that says vote to end corruption warren and then we have some persons seated and there's there just oh there's this lady she has her hand on her chest and you can see her face like oh you know so she's somewhere between smiling and sad i'm not sure <laughs> what you can see on her face like she's feeling something right now like wow you know um, the, the subtext beneath that image is clockwise from left, from top left, just like I said just now. So the official story is from top. The first image is New Hampshire supporters of Bernie Sanders, uh, Joseph R. Biden Jr. To the next, to the, to, the, to the right of that. 
then Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren. So that is, um, hmm, yeah, that, that's the pictures that are on the front page. So let's go to the first story that's on the front page. It says, Trump budget, cut safety net, add to mil military, backing away from a health care repeal. This article is by Jim Tankersley, Margot um, Sanger Katz, Alan Rappaport, and Emily Cochran. And it's out of Washington. President Trump released a $4.8 trillion, trillion dollar budget proposal on Monday that includes a familiar list of deep cuts to student loan assistance, affordable housing efforts, food stamps and medicaid reflecting mr trump's reflecting mr trump's election year effort to continue shrinking the federal safety net the proposal which is unlikely to be approved in its entirety by congress includes additional spending for the military national defense and border enforcement along with money for veterans m veterans Mr. Trump's Space Force initiative and an extension of the individual income tax cuts that were set to expire in 2025. Its biggest reduction is an annual 2% decrease in, in spreading in spending on discretionary domestic programs like education and environmental project projection protection sorry. Speaking to the nation's governors at the White House on Monday, Mr. Trump said that his budget proposal would bolster the United States mili military and its nuclear arsenal and bring the deficit close to zero in not that long a period of time. However, Mr. Trump's budget does not estimate wiping out a deficit until 2035 and gets there only through rosy assumptions about economic growth and uh, an area where the administration's past predictions have proved to be overconfident and continued ability and the continued ability of the government to borrow money at rock bottom rates it also projects adding 3.4 trillion dollars to the national debt by 2024 at the end of a potential sec second term second trump term Despite the hefty borrowing, Mr. Trump's budget does not de detail another round of tax cuts that his administration has suggested he will pursue if he wins re-election. Instead, it extends for 10 years the expiring cuts contained in the, tra in the tax overhaul Mr. Trump signed in 2017. At an estimated revenue loss of about $1.4 trillion, the budget also assumes large amounts of new military spending, including $3.2 billion, a $459 million increase, to help develop a high-speed weapon capable of evading missile defense systems, and $18 billion for the newly established Space Force. And here is a quote, we're going to have a very good budget with a very powerful military budget because we have no choice, he said, adding that he was aiming to reduce spending by rooting out waste and fraud. That story continues on page A13 and two headlines below beneath that ins and outs. The budget document provides a window into the White House's priorities. That story is on page B5. Hopeful math. The budget pre uh, predicts the economy will grow faster than experts expect. Um, that is on page uh, B1. In other headlines, um, okay. So here is our update on the coronavirus. Virus lockdown stifles economy in a weary China. Um, in a war in China, death toll passes 1,000, snarled supply lines and fears of a sharp fall in production. And this story is by Keith Bradshaw. 
Workers are stuck in their hometowns. Officials want detailed health plans before factories or offices can reopen. Assembly lines that make General Motors, General Motors cars and Apple iPhones are standing silent. More than two weeks after China locked down a majority, a major city um, to stop a dangerous viral outbreak, one of the world's largest economies remains largely idle. Much of the country was supposed to have reopened by now, but its empty streets, quiet factories and lesions of inactive workers suggest that weeks or months could pass before this vital motor of global growth is humming again. The global economy could suffer the longer China stays in low gear. It has been hampered by both the outbreak and its own containment efforts, a process that has cut off workers from their jobs and factories from their raw materials. The, results, the result is a slowdown that is already slashing traffic along the world's shipping lanes and leading to forecasts uh, of a sharp fall in production of everything from cars to smartphones. It's like Europe in medieval times, said George Wutke, the president of the European Chamber of, Chamber of Commerce in China, where each city has its checks and cross-checks. The authorities still have a long way to go before the outbreak can be tamed. On Tuesday, they reported a milestone. The overall death toll from coronavirus in China had topped 1,000. On Monday, the number was 908. In a sign that China's, China's leaders uh, feel increasing the pressure, increasing pressure to look like they are in control, Xi Jinping, um, the country's top leader, toured a Beijing neighborhood and hospital in what state media described as an inspection of the front line of the outbreak. Chinese officials have been uh, roundly criticized online even in the face of tough censorship for what many see as a slow initial response and the suppression of early warnings. That story continues on page A8 and you can see a photo beneath below of President Xi Jinping of China touring um, touring Beijing on, on Monday with and people are there, uh, people are you know, um, applauding him and he's waving to them and everyone is wearing a dusk mask mask i think that's what it's called yeah that face mask thing that goes over your mouth yes in other stories warren stays course in a race that has changed leaving skirmish leaving skirmishes to others like sanders and Buttigieg. um by matt this story is by matt flegenheimer or flegenheimer one of them i apologize for mispronouncing his name that's what i did Two days before a once mission critical, two days before a once mission critical primary in a state she she neighbors, Senator Elizabeth Warren, typically exceptional at holding a room, had not finished speak, finished speaking when something unusual happened. Dozens of voters began filtering out of the middle school gym she had reserved. Campaign school sorry, campaign staff strained to enlist prospective volunteers on their way to their cars. And here's a quote, someone, anyone, one organizer called out as, this, as the parting guests stepped around him. And when Ms. Warren wound toward her big finish, the go out and get him kicker, um, in these urgent final hours, her mind wandered accidentally to home. It's up to you, Massachusetts, <laughs> to decide what to do, Ms. Warren instructed. Supporters looked back at her, murmuring she realized why. And to the people of New Hampshire, she amended. <laughs> um, on the eve of a contest she had hoped to win, and probably will not, according to polls, one week removed from a caucus she had hoped to win, and certainly did not, according to Iowans, Ms. Warren has arrived almost imperceptibly at a precarious stage. 
In a primary adjoining her own state, it is Senator Bernie Sanders, another New Englander, and Pete Buttigieg, um, the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, who are leading in polls. That story continues on uh, page A17. And in another story, um, which headline reads, Held in port on ship rife with disease. The, that story is by Ben Dooley and Motoko Rich. And it's from Yokohama, Japan. In the passenger decks of the quarantined Diamond Princess cruise ship, more than 2,500 travelers are carefully isolated. Meals are delivered to their cabins. They have permission to walk on deck six feet apart for a few minutes a day. Down below, more than 1,000 crew members live and work elbow to elbow, preparing the passengers' dishes and eating simple buffet-style meals together with as many as four sharing a bathroom and sharing the risk of possible infection from the coronavirus. The risks to all aboard were reinforced on Monday as Japan's health ministry said that an additional 65 people had tested positive for the virus, nearly doubling the total of 135. According to Princess Cruises, which operates the ship, at least 20 of them are American. The ship already has the largest number of coronavirus cases outside the epicenter in China, where more than 40,000 have been infected. While the quarantine slapped on the Diamond Princess was meant to contain the virus, the conditions facing the crew could end up doing the opposite and help spread the illness disease, the illness disease experts say. At least 10 crew members have been infected, with five cases announced on Sunday and five more on Monday. That story continues on page 89. I still remember when I read, the, read it the first time and there were only two dead. This is crazy. This disease is just going and going and going. There's another photo on the front page and it's a group of dancers. It looks like what seems like uh, female dancers. You have adults and children. And beneath that photo, the, the, the caption says, Puerto Rico's many colors. Much of the population celebrates African roots, but the census tells a different story. Page A22 has that story. In other news, a traffic arrest, a visit from ICE, and a shooting. Tension escalates over New York's policies. This story is by Annie Correll and Ed Shanahan. Gaspar Avendano Hernandez left his home in Brooklyn early last Thursday to go to his construction job. But Mr. Aven, Aven, Avendano, Mr. Hernandez, um, an undocumented Mexican immigrant who had been dropped, sorry, who had been deported in 2011 after pleading guilty to an assault charge only to return did not get, get far. He was confronted outside his house by federal immigration officers who were there to arrest him. What happened next illustrates the finger pointing between the Trump administration and officials in New York and other liberal jurisdictions over their so-called sanctuary policies shielding undocumented immigrants from federal enforcement efforts. An altercation broke out in front of Mr. Mr. Hernandez's home, according to witnesses and officials, as the officers from Immigration, Immigration and Custom Enforcement, or ICE, tried to detain him. Mr. Hernandez was shot with a, sh with a stun gun. One officer then fired a gun at the second man, the son of Mr. Hernandez's longtime girlfriend with the bullet piercing the young man's cheek. That story continues on uh, page, 20, page A25. Justice Department charges four Chinese in Equifax hack. Military scene as behind broad data theft. This story is by Katie Benner, 
Uh, four members of China's military were charged on Monday with hacking into Equifax, one of the nation's largest credit reporting agencies, and stealing trade secrets and the personal data of about 145 million Americans in 2017. The charges underscored China's quest to obtain American, Americans' data and its willingness to float a 2015 agreement with the United States to refrain from hacking and cyber attacks, all in an effort to expand economic power and influence. The indictment suggests the hack was part of a series of major data thefts organized by the People's Liber Liberation Army and China's intelligence agencies. China can use cash caches ca caches of personal information and combine them with artificial intelligence to better target American intelligence officers and, o and other officials. Attorney General William P. Barr said, this was a deliberate and sweeping intrusion into the private information of the American people, he said. The information stolen from F Equifax, which is based in Atlanta, could reveal whether any American officials are under financial stress and thus susceptible to bribery or blackmail. That story continues on page A13. In other headlines, um, beginning with the international headline, Storm kills five in Europe, driving winds and rain battered Europe, causing transportation chaos and cutting power to to thousands. That's on page A4. Uh, Merkel's chosen successor out. Um, Annegret Kramp Karenbar steps aside after her party voted with the far right in one German state. I'm sure I mispronounced that name. I apologize. That story is on page A6. Uh, in national headlines, title. IX, I think that's nine in Roman numbers. I'm not sure. Title IX tackles date um, violence. Um, new federal rules on sexual misconducts at schools will cement domestic and dating violence and stalking as forms of gender discrimination. Page 821. An opening for Giuliani. The Justice Department said it would consider information from Rudy Giuliani about Ukraine, page A21. And in New York, grief behind each door. A Brooklyn neighborhood reels from the murder of the greatest neighbor or friend you could ask for, um, page A23. And in sports, they're all, they're all working breeds. A glance around the Westminster Kennel um, club dogs dog show makes it clear that beauty doesn't come easy even if you live in a lap of in a lap of luxury that is on page b12 and in business and finally they want coffee with foam um, as cities and states ban foam food and drink containers a Michigan company that makes them fight back. And that ends our coverage of the news for today. And of course, we're reading from the New York Times.